Shar Margolis, Shar Communications Incorporated, and Shar Vision LLC do not endorse or offer for any purpose but entertainment the views of any guest or other expert on Shar Vision or UBN. I knew things before they happened from the time I was a child. At the age of eight, I saw a spirit at the foot of my bed and didn't know what it was. And in my 20s, I finally realized I had a special ability that could help others. I have learned that love never dies. There is a spirit world that can communicate with us, and we all have the gift of intuition. Join me, and together we will explore the possibilities of the unknown from beyond and more. This is Shar Vision. Hi, everybody. It's Sunny and Shar, and I don't know what day this is of quarantine, but I'm just trying to find the best in it. And I hope you are too. And I hope that your loved ones are safe and that you're safe. And I want to send prayers out to everybody who has somebody who's ill and also prayers out to those who have crossed over that they've met their loved ones in the white light when they crossed over and they're having joyous reunions because that's what happens when we cross over to the spirit world. And today, uh, get, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom announced a new partnership with FEMA it could, on, on Friday today. It's the 24th of April, if, if you're watching on YouTube, 2020. And um, they're going to provide three meals a day for California's elderly population struggling amid the coronavirus ep epidemic. So, pandemic. So, I just think that he's amazing and I'm, I feel so blessed to be in California. And my first guest today, I actually have two guests. I have Romy Rosemont and then I have Richard Ayoub who's gonna talk about Project Angel Food and, he, and Richard is going to tell us later on about how Harry and Megan helped deliver food for Project Angel Food. And you guys, we've, Richard's been on the show as a regular. So we even have a funny picture of me volunteering for him that maybe we'll show later. But anyway, first we're going to go to Rosie, I mean to, to Romy, Rosemont, who was on Glee. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And, and what else have you done? I mean, because you're very widely known. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. Um, no, I, I am, I'm currently uh, recurring on A Million Little Things. And I'm just one of those people where everybody goes, wait, did we go to high school together? Right. You know, do you, oh, do you live down the street? So that's kind of who I am. I mean, but I'm you were, you so were, um, you were the, the mother to I was the Finn's mom. Over. Right. Exactly. I was Finn's mom, which, I mean, she actually had a name. Her name was Carol Hudson Hummel. But everybody, she was referred to as Finn's mom at all times. Okay, I just want to say he. They just put up the picture of Chris Colfer, who Bill is on the earth with us. So don't freak out. We're talking about Fitz, who was the character on the show, and um, and you're in a million little things. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Which is now on ABC. And honestly, I had no idea that your husband is the man that. What is his name? Stephen Root. Right. And yeah. he is the one that people love to dislike on Barry. Oh, exactly. Oh, no. He's, I mean, he's, yeah, he's not a nice man. I was literally going to say something derogatory, but he is not a nice man. Um, right. We're actually watching, he's going to be um, coming up in something called, uh, he's, uh, HBO is doing a show called Perry Mason. And once oh. again, he is not playing a pleasant man. Seriously. Well, I have to tell you, he's an amazing actor because- Yes, I, I I watched Barry. I watched the whole thing, and he was amazing in it. Thank and you. so, um, how did you get started in in all the things that you're doing and in, in acting? Uh, in in acting, I was raised in an entertainment family, and I just I I grew up on sets. I loved it. I absolutely yeah. loved it. My what dad. Dad. Who was your dad? Um, his name was he. Pa he passed over two years ago on the 22nd we just celebrated his two-year anniversary um oh. his name was norman rosemont and he was um he did the movies of the week the classics for television in the 70s and 80s and wow. so i just i loved it i love 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 it and then i just you know i was always that person who was slowly um 
you know, I was, I just always stuck around, always stuck around, like st- still waiting for my big break kind of thing. Um, so, and that's how I got. Well, but, but you know, the bottom line is that you're still working where a lot yeah. of people who've had what been very famous are a flash in the pan and then you never see them again. 100%. I'm still a fresh idea is what I call it. Yeah. It's, I, oh, think yeah. I really feel like it's a way better way to go for most people. It is. It is. And especially for women, to be honest. Yeah, Especially you should be a little bit under radar. Yeah, exactly. But, um, and then, um, okay, so what, you have a baking business called Tiny Bites. What is no, that? I actually, I start, I tried to start a baking business because I love, love to bake. And in fact, you can ask Chris, I always brought muffins and cookies and whatever to set to the set because I love oh, to bake. Yeah. And my husband was sick of eating the, the baked goods. <laughs> and I, I went from muffins, I would bake muffins, and then I would get pissed off that because they're actors, they'd only eat half the muffin. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> make these. So I, they made smaller and smaller and smaller. And I came up with something that was an inch and a half by an inch and a half. And I called them tiny bites. And I was going to start a business. And then I got a series in Vancouver and was there for two years. And then oh. my parents were ill. And so it kind of took me away. But, you know, and, and, and now what's really exciting is to be able to kind of mix um, the love of cooking and the love of food with, um, okay. Sorry about that. My zoom keeps going out. So my thing's kind of weird too, but anyway, um, my, my, I don't know if it's the ghost and the spirits or it's just my internet, but you never know. But anyway, so I back to, you would like the actors and actresses would only eat one bite. Right. Exactly. And so I'm, I made them as one bite. And when it came time to try to turn it into a business, I just, I got an acting job that took me away for two seasons up in right. Vancouver and, and then my parents got ill and then, oh. kind of, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it never, it never found its place. It's so we have a mutual friend. Your best friend is Gina Rugolo, who is my manager oh, in the two of you. Yeah. I, I, it's so sweet. The photo of you guys together and tell us, exactly what what your project is to raise money because that's what's going to tie in when we bring Richard in exactly exactly we well um a couple of weeks ago Gina called me up and said um I have this idea will you go in on it with me and I I, without even knowing what it was I was like yes and she said why don't we gather celebrity recipes or recipes from celebrities to benefit those in need and we'll highlight charities and we'll get, you know, it, you know, we'll kind of start out slow and we'll highlight, we'll, we'll bring people to the website because of the celebrities and mm-hmm. then the people will donate. And we have, a f- we have three charities on the site that people can donate to. And we're going to rotate those charities because like the tagline is celebrity recipes to benefit those in need. Okay. So I have to show, so tell us a few of the celebrities. Um, well, you. Me, and, okay. I mean, on, on, for for this week, it was Henry Winkler and Kathy Najimy and um, Tony Trucks, who's on on SEAL Team. Please, right? I hope that's right. So um, I have, I have to show you what I got. So you made my, it? I made my chicken soup just oh for God. you. Can you see it? Oh, I can, and it looks good. And a- actually, our wonderful um, artistic director, she made it. And Wait, did she like it? Oh my God, that looks good. It is so good. That is the stuff that 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 heals you one hundred percent. Right. Um, we've got Chris coming on uh, next week. He he made a cocktail. And Chris um, Col- wait, Chris Colfer. Chris Colfer is coming. You know on. that I'm his Jewish fairy godmother. Oh, I know. We actually at Chris's twenty ninth. You and I were supposed to be in freaking Scotland in a couple of I weeks. No, we were supp- in May. We were supposed to be celebrating his birthday together. No. Looking for Bigfoot together. We would have bonded over Bigfoot. Exactly. And Loch Ness Monster. The whole thing. <laughs> that would have been the oh, most no. thing. I mean the Loch Ness Monster, yeah. not Bigfoot. I mix them up. Sorry. I mean, wait, is the is Bigfoot Canadian, right? Look at that. I'm not sure. Not sure. But I'm, um so I and I think our paths crossed uh at one of his birthday parties, maybe like maybe oh, last year. I think you're right. The, I'm, sure, um, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. And that and virtual so, reality thing. Yeah. How do people, first of all, tell us the name again of your charity. 
So it's Stayin, S-T-A-Y-I-N, home cooking, Stayin Home Cooking. Stayin Home Cooking. Right. And you can reach us at stayinhomecooking.org. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, I have to say, it's a really, um, our designer, Miriam Dwinwell, um, Dwinell, um, from Churn Butter Designs, just really made it such an, an easy, an easy site to navigate. And Annie it's, Beck, was, it's it's really beautiful. It's, it's and and we created it really quickly from Gina coming up with the idea and Annie Beck, who's the creative director, kind of coming in, and it really came from a place from the heart of what are we going to do during the, during this time? We just want to help in some way, and it's really mm-hmm. hard when you're just sitting in your house, right? So, and and everybody, I mean, we see people suffering, and we want to do something, but we don't know what to do. And there's so many people exactly. who are are sh- they have no food. Yeah. I mean, food, I mean, funny enough, and, um, is that I think right when this started, I actually, um, signed up to volunteer for project angel food and you we, did, I did, but I haven't been called yet. No, but it you was you know, just because you actually want to, I mean, everybody was so inundated with stuff. Do you know what I mean? With right. how, do we do this? how do we do this? And now that everybody's kind of gotten in the swing and we are in this situation that we don't know when it's going to be done. I right. Think everybody's just really opening up their hearts and mm-hmm. their minds and trying to figure out a way to you to also to, to, to be of service, to be productive. Well, it's so beautiful what you and Gina are doing. How can people get on the website and how can people donate? Literally, all you have to do is go to stayinhomecooking.org. It's S-T-A-Y-I-N-H-O-M-E-C-O-O-K-I-N-G.org. Stayinhomecooking.org. And then follow us on Instagram, which is also at stayinhomecooking. Um, and, you know, we're, we're just, we've, it, we just launched it on Monday. So it's not even five five days well, old. Right. You not just launched it on Monday. I think it was two weeks ago. Gina said, Oh, I've got an idea. It's exactly. like, right. Exactly. It, it, it's like Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney. If anybody knows who they are, because I'm aging myself. Oh, let's put on a play. That's exactly it. it that's exactly my mother's it. curtains for whatever. Yeah, exactly. I've got a barn. <laughs> right. Exactly. 100%. And that's exactly what it was. And we just dove in. And well, it's it's and incredible and we're also really hoping that it it catches on so that even after this because look no no one's going to stop loving cooking and mm-hmm. no one's going to stop loving giving to those in need and so we're just going to kind of keep it going and it, it's really turning out with the the different recipes and the amount of people who are now kind of saying oh do, do you need any more celebrities or you know people that might be recognizable but right. you don't necessarily know their name. So we're letting the food also be the stars and the charities. Yeah, it's so, so special. So so just to recap, the charities is Project uh, Angel oh, I'm Food. I'm sorry, that is so right. So this week it's Project Angel Food, uh-huh. and the family, which helps, um, who, which helps families and children who are either in abusive situations or neglectful kind of get on their feet. Right, right now, they're actually getting supplies like diapers and food, things that wow. we took for granted. And then also the SAG After Foundation, which is helping SAG After members who are financially oh, nice. and can't do it. And then coming up, we are doing Broadway Cares, which is oh, doing nice. the whole community. And then the Actors Fund, which does all of the entertainment community, which is amazing. And then so nice. um, we're also and and um Glorious Pies, which puts to, which has put autistic people to work and now there's no work and they also teach them skills and so we're we're really kind of rotating it so that because everybody's been affected by this virus everybody Everybody. and And, we can't do enough exactly all of us can't do enough and there are ones that don't get very much attention so we've got the bigger ones and the very important ones i mean project angel food is one of the most important foundations out there i mean i i I agree with you and i think that um, I'm so grateful that you came on the show to promote Thank you. the thank charity. You. Awesome. And, and we love Gina Rugolo, who's I know listening. And thank <laughs> you so much for going out of your way and doing this. Like it, it's, it's so important. Oh, it's so our pleasure. We're you so know, to do it. I, I once had a, a sign up in, I think it was in my, in my office. It said, 
a candle loses nothing of its light by lighting another candle. Oh, that's really lovely. So thank you so much for sharing the light with everybody and helping so many people. And I'm, I'm going to say goodbye. And, and I can't wait to see you when this is all over and in person exactly. and hang out. Exactly. I would love it. Thank you so yeah. much. For thank you me. so much. And um, you guys don't go away. I want to thank Romy for being here. Don't go away because Richard Ayub is coming up in one minute. Hooray. In one minute. Hey everybody, it's Sunny and Shar, and I am so excited. I am Richard, over the moon you, Char, to share with you, you that I have a new meeting. book coming out called The well, Universe is Calling um, You. And there's an amazing forward email? by RuPaul. There's an endorsement by Chris Colfer. Oh, I didn't It's I about it. understanding your in intuition. It's you about protecting yourself from negative energies. Yeah. It's about understanding so your you. essence you and your true purpose and your okay. soul's purpose yeah. on Great. this We'd earth love to have you, you yeah, can get it absolutely. at barnesandnoble.com okay, you can get fun. it at amazon.com okay. i would love for you to order the book and let me know what you think of it write a review for us if you feel like it thanks so much Hey everybody, it's Sunny and Shar, and I just wanted to answer a couple questions. People have been calling the office and texting and emailing, do I do private sessions? Well, yes, I do. And uh, I love reading for my clients. I do phone, Skype, uh, FaceTime, and in person if we're in the same city. I also teach intuition. So if you have an interest in doing that, or if, you have to, uh, if you're interested in getting your family together and you want a group reading, I do those as well. So just call 248-909-2427, ask for Nicole, and I look forward to reading for you. Thanks. pleasure to introduce my dear friend, Richard Ayub, who is the director of Project Angel Food. Richard, thank you so much for being here. You've just been so, so helpful to Char Vision and to all the people that are hungry. Good to see you. It's a beautiful Friday after a very long week. And right. so nice to wrap it up with you, Char. Wait, and so I, I'm just so proud of you because you your budget went from 3.9 million to 6.3 million that you did on your own within four years, right? Well, we did that with our whole team, obviously, but uh, during this entire COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic, I will tell you in the last five weeks, yeah. the community has come through for us in the most beautiful way possible. Mm -hmm. And we have 3,000 different individual donations from $2 wow. to $20 to $200 to $100,000. Really? Yeah. Every single donation has power, energy, and love attached to it. So we, we value every single one of them. It's and I can tell you, Shar, right now mm -hmm. that we used to have 1,600 clients a day. Yeah. As of today... We have 1,800. We are going to get to 2,000 in the next two to three weeks. Wow. The need has grown exponentially. Wow. So I understand, Richard, yes. that you had some very special angels delivering food, and Gina and I went crazy about it. <laughs> Will you want to tell everybody about who came and what they did and who they are? And just to give background, just in case uh, some of your viewers don't know, Project Angel Food cooks, prepares, and delivers meals to people living with critical illness, heart mm -hmm. disease, lung disease, diabetes, HIV, kidney failure, and all forms of cancer. And I volunteered. And you volunteered. You wore the hairnet. I wore the hair and I do have that, Kurt. There's me. I can't believe I'm showing that. <laughs> there it is. Adorable. But I had the best Tiny time. Did not come. I had the best time and we need more volunteers. Yes, but right now we put a pause on volunteers in the kitchen because we had 200 people come through the kitchen in one week and we thought, 
that's a lot of potential exposures. So right. we hired some out of work chefs. Oh, smart. In, and they're helping us out, which is incredible. And we're okay. helping them out by giving them a job. So we do have some limited people close to our family who right. are doing deliveries. And uh, two of those are named Harry and Megan. And Prince Harry, <laughs> come on! Prince Harry and Megan Markle, come on! That's amazing. How did you even do that? So, you know, it's Project Angel Food has been around for 30 years. And people in Los Angeles know us and love us. And Megan, and she told me to call her Megan. And Harry said, please call me Harry. Don't call right. us Duke and Duchess. They're really down to earth. Right. So they came on Easter Sunday. They wanted wow. to serve us. And they wanted to do something on that special day. Aww. So they came in here and they did a tour of the kitchen. And during the tour, Harry asked so many amazingly great questions. How many people do you serve? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what are your clients like? Who, what illnesses do they have? And he talked to every single. Wow. Uh, he talked to every single uh, person there in the kitchen, our head chef, Daniel, and then we got to this portion of the kitchen on the edge, uh -huh. and there was our female chef, Chef Angel. And uh -huh. she was looking down, and I said, Chef Angel, please meet Harry and Megan. <laughs> Harry and Megan. <laughs> and she started crying. Tears flowed oh. down her face. Oh, she my. She couldn't control herself. She was overcome. Oh, my. Harry says, is your name really Angel? And she goes, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. <laughs> and Megan, just adorable as can be. She said, I would hug you if I could, but because of social distancing, we have to keep apart. And so uh, Harry kept asking, so Angel, how long have you Wait, worked here? I, I, we're, we're losing your audio. Kurt, can you get his audio back? Um, I still have his audio on my end. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, so I was saying that um, Harry kept asking questions about her. How long have you worked here? Aww. You know, he's extremely inquisitive and attentive and really cares about people. And That's then amazing. I just want to tell you this really beautiful story. I went with them on their very first delivery. It was in Burbank, California. Where was it? It was in Burbank. And it was to this gentleman that, by the name of Frank. Uh -huh. And he has, he's living with cancer. So uh -huh. they went up to the door. They're wearing gloves. He's wearing a baseball cap. She's wearing a Project Angel Food cap. They're wearing masks, face masks. Yeah. And they leave the food at the doorstep, knock at the door, pull back six to seven feet and he comes, but he's behind the screen. And so very first question from Harry is, how are you feeling? And he oh. says, I'm okay. I had treatments yesterday, but I'm doing okay. Then oh, I ask, how's the food? He says, delicious. And then <laughs> I said, it's delicious. And he goes, yeah, it's a hot meal. It's delicious. <laughs> And then Harry asked this beautiful question that made me realize he is his mother's son. He asked, and I've never asked this, and I've done hundreds of deliveries. Yeah. He said, do your neighbors check in on you? Oh, wow. Like, what a beautiful question. What a thoughtful man. And Frank's answer was no. And oh. Harry said, we all need to take care of one another. And then as we walked back to my vehicle and his vehicle, Harry said to me, I want to spend more time with these clients. Oh. You can tell with the distance, with the screen, with the illness, oh. I felt Frank's pain. And it was just the most beautiful moment. 
in this whole experience. And one of the things he said to me as I was leaving, he said, mm -hmm. I can do the rest, or he and Megan could do them on their own. Mm -hmm. He said, um, we want to do such a good job that you invite us back. And I'm like, oh. Wow. Um, he said that? Okay, he is truly a prince. He is truly a prince. And he they came back on Wednesday, then they came back on Friday. They and did? They did. Wait a minute. Delivery. How come Bradley Bessie didn't invite me over there then? <laughs> Brad <laughs> Bessie was with us. And uh, I know Brad and he I was. went on that first delivery. I know he was. It was so delightful. And so well, I'm so happy for you guys. That should help. That should really help. It does help because all of a sudden, you know, people are calling you. Wait a second. I just saw your name in People Magazine. It was in People Magazine, yeah. I saw it. I was so excited. There were 154 articles that we can track right now about it. Amazing. It crazy, amazing. On Thursday, not this past Thursday, but the one before, uh, I was interviewed nonstop for 12 hours. 7 wow. a.m. to 7 p.m. People wow. watching CNN, oh. uh, Entertainment Tonight, Access Hollywood. Uh, it was incredible. All of the interviews, it was just the exposure is really, really incredible. I am so honored that you took the time to share with us today. It means the world to me. I mean, I've, we've known each other for how many years? Oh, we've known each other for a while. 25? Yeah, probably. And I'm, you so, know, um, I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you. But I love this because you're not editing me down. You're nope. getting the behind the scenes. No, and you are welcome to have this video and do what you want with it. Thank you, Char. You can make me look younger if you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're trying to get the ring light and the, <laughs> you know, the banner oh, in the background. The ring light really works. You need one. Yeah. You, I you need it here. Get one. Maybe, maybe Megan and Harry would do a, a promo for you guys. We're hoping, you know, we want to be very delicate with the relationship and we want to honor them. Yeah. You don't want to take advantage of them. We don't want to take advantage. You know? Yeah. God bless them. What a what a beautiful, beautiful story. They're they're the real deal. And yeah. I will tell you, a gentleman called me up um after the Friday's deliveries. And yeah. he said, Thank you for sending Harry and Megan to my home. He Aww. said, I've had HIV for 30 years. Oh. I've been on your program, on your program, you know, the food delivery program for off and on for 29 years. Mm -hmm. I'm in section eight housing, stuck with my ex during this quarantine. And oh, it's geez. miserable. And they brought me such life and joy. Aww. And it gave me something to look forward to. Oh my. So, I mean you know, those things are really, really important. And Megan and Harry did not want us to warn anyone that they were coming. Right. They wanted to get the true, you know, situations. A lot of people didn't recognize them because they're covered up. They, you know, you don't right. expect a prince to be wearing a baseball cap and have this mask over his face. Right. So wearing jeans. You know, it was really, they wanted to just get the true essence of Los Angeles philanthropy and Project Angel Food. And they did, because most of people did not recognize them until later. I mean, it's truly like an amazing story. I'm, I'm still in awe of it. Now, it, how can people get a hold of you? How can people volunteer? You might get more volunteers if they think Megan and Harry are going to be there. <laughs> I swear, I'll be free eventually when I'm out of quarantine again. So as soon as we open up the kitchen again mm -hmm. uh, to volunteers, we want people to come. Uh, right now, we're taking a few limited volunteers, and these are people that we know and have been vetted through us already uh, right. who are delivering meals and helping ease the workload of the drivers. And that's what how, Harry how and Megan donate? did. But they can donate at angelfood.org 
slash COVID-19, angelfood.org slash COVID-19, because oh. we're onboarding so many clients mm -hmm. and we, we do it when we believe you tell the universe what you're going to do and what you need. And I believe the universe conspires to help make it happen. So we're doing this knowing the funding will come. Build the field and they will come. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Wow, Richard, you're just you know, an angel right. on earth. Who knew, like who knew 25 years ago that you would be making such a huge, huge difference? Being the psychic I am, I guess I should have known that. <laughs> <laughs> that you've made such a huge, huge lit difference in so many people's lives. It's so special. I mean. It's incredibly rewarding. Right. To be doing this work at this particular time. And, you know, I truly believe we were born for this moment because I we agree. were created in 1989 in response to the AIDS crisis. Here we are 30 years later, another pandemic, a lot of fear, a lot of health crisis going on, a lot of do you get near people and fearless people are coming forward and saying we need to treat each other as humans. Are people donating donating masks to your your people and toilet paper and So that's a really good point because as we talk to our clients, you know, we're providing them with food, which mm -hmm. is incredible because they don't need to get out of their home and fight the lines at the grocery stores. But we they should not them. be. They should not be in contact they, at the grocery store. Shouldn't stores. be. They need. I haven't stay. been gone. I, I've stayed in for one month. Oh my god, their immune systems are compromised. Mm -hmm. They need to stay home. We want them to stay home, and so we're doing all the shopping, cooking, and delivering for them, and it's free, and it's always been. So as we've been talking to them, we asked, "Is there anything else you need?" and just like you, Char, just like me, just like Stuart and everyone else and mm -hmm. Romy probably, we all are having problems getting toilet paper. And so are these folks. And so we are right. putting together care packages with two rolls of toilet paper, yeah. hand sanitizer and mm -hmm. face masks because wow. we're wearing face masks. So we're mm -hmm. gonna give them reusable face masks that they can wash like this. Nice. And uh, so they can wear when our driver comes and it's just so added nice. protection. That's so, that's so, so nice. Wait, what is this about? There's a waiting list of 400 people to become a Project Angel Food client. Tell me about that. So that's what I was telling you that we've already onboarded 200 of the 400 and we're going to get the other 200 on within the next two to three weeks. So those are the people who've been vetted that we know have a critical illness and need our food. And COVID just brought it to the surface. And we are getting, you know, on average, 10 phone calls an hour here. From an hour? Are food insecure and need help. And so it's hard to keep up with all that. And we're transferring some of them to food banks because some have have mobility and can go get food at food banks and they can cook. Mm -hmm. Some are seniors and have no illness but need food. So we're telling meals on wheels. But the ones who are ill and cannot leave their home are the ones that we take care of. And we're adding more. So we're going to be up to 2,000 and we're going to keep going until we until we can't do it anymore. But this is like, but think about it. This is one city. Los Angeles. Think about all the cities in the world, in all the states. There's a lot of all the countries. Yes. And how many people don't have food? They don't have food. And ours isn't just food. It's medically tailored to their illness. And I've got to tell you how proud I am of our entire team. First of all, our service has continued uninterrupted this entire time. Right. Secondly, we haven't gone to a universal menu. We continue to do all of our different menus for each illness, all the specialized menus. Oh, like for diabetes? Kidney failure, for congestive heart failure. Like, Crazy. You know, it's incredible. amazing. I have to say, when I volunteered, that head guy was like the Gestapo. 
Well, <laughs> you know, uh, put that barge, lift that bell. We like our volunteers to feel like they're very useful and and are tired by the I'm end totally of the I'm totally afraid of him. I did whatever he said. <laughs> was it one? Was it? Do no, you I think he, he it, no, it was, I think he had brown hair, light brown hair. Okay. I can't remember who. Daniel, I maybe. Was, yeah. Yeah. He's our head chef, Daniel. Yeah. He's been with us 20 years. Right. And he's one of the newer ones. <laughs> he gets it done. He gets, he gets the job done. done. They all do. Very efficient. And they make it fun, too. You had fun. I, I had the best time. I truly, I really do want to come back. Yes. I mean, I truly, truly do. Even if Megan and Harry aren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, I love you so much. I love you. Thank you so much for everything you do. Tell people how, how they can donate one more time before we say adieu. They can go to angelfood.org slash COVID-19. Angelfood.org slash COVID-19. Any donation really counts a great deal. Even a dollar. Even a dollar, two dollars, you know, it adds up. And, yeah. you know, if you get five dollars together, that pays for all of the ingredients for one meal for someone. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for always being one of my favorite people on Char Vision. I'm so grateful to you for all the goodness you do in the world. And I'm honored to know you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Char. Okay. Always great seeing you. Thank you. Stay. Big hugs and kisses. stay there. Stay at home. I'm, I'm going to stay at home. But when I can come back out, I'm coming out and I'll bring people with me. We'll, we'll do a big volunteer day. Okay, good. Okay. Take good care of yourself. Be safe. I will. Don't take chances. Be safe. No. Okay. I wear gloves, but not right now. Okay. And your mask. And my mask. Okay. Good. I you have like, you look two of them. You look sexy. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Take good care. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, dear. Okay. Now, I promised I would do readings. I know that the show kind of went late today, but we're planning on, I'm planning on doing some readings for you guys. So, Kurt, could you kindly get us some people or somebody? Yeah, somebody. I can get you someone. Um, I have anybody, a anybody. Uh, 732 uh, New Jersey area code for you. Oh, hi, New Jersey. Hi, Shaw. Hi, Shaw. How are you? How are you today? Good. Um, I just have for my daughter. I would, if you had something for my daughter, because she hasn't been well, and we don't know what's wrong with her. Wait, wait, say that again. The, you, you, you broke up. Your, your daughter and... Okay. For my daughter, if you have something that you can feel for my daughter, is is do you mean uh, uh you mean about health or someone else's health? Yeah, yeah, yeah her health, my daughter's health. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm picking up on health, <clears throat> and yeah. um, but not the COVID nineteen, something else, right? Um, that's the problem. Don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. Yeah. And, okay, so two things. One, I, I don't know if this is a first name or middle name. I'm getting an S or C, and then I'm getting an M or an A. Um, no. So is that somebody deceased around you? Probably deceased. Probably my, my sister Sandra, because I called once before and I went blank. Okay, so it must be Sandra that's here. Okay. It, and was there anything hereditary with health? Tell me, tell me a little bit about her. Is she tired all the time? No, no. It's like a little fatigue right now, but it just happened during this time, you know. Okay. Look, it, I'm not allowed to give out medical advice, but I feel like your sister's okay. here. I feel like her spirit's here, and I feel like she's telling me that in time they'll figure this out. Okay. All right. But but I'm not, so I'm not I'm not sure what this well, is exactly. Yeah, Sandy had thyroid, you know, so I don't know if it's thyroid. This is. May well maybe because I'm hearing there's something that could be hereditary, so maybe check into that. 
Okay, can you tell me a little bit about what 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 her her thing is? Like what slows her down? Not feeling good. Everything else came out good. Okay, I can't hear you. Uh, I said she still her results were all came out good so far, but she's not feeling good. Like mild temperature, the whole thing is mild temperature. Okay, I'm not sure what this is, but my feeling is is that you'll figure that you'll be able. She'll get through it. She'll be all right. Good. Down the road. Good. But but Thank don't you. ignore it. Don't ignore it. Stay on top of it. You need to boost her immune yes. system. Too. You need to boost her immune system. Okay. Yeah. And have any other message for me from my over the other side? Well, I I'm, I was seeing somebody who's either a Joseph or John or Jay. James. A uh, Jay. Jay. Yeah. Like Jay, my my uh, brother-in-law. Is like he a John my niece's or husband. Jay, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, where is he deceased? Your brother-in-law? Yeah, uh, he's my not my brother-in-law. He's like my my niece's husband, but he, he's very nice. Jay, yes. Mm -hmm. But he's deceased, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah. I feel like he he wants the family to know that he's um, in a good place. Why is he showing me a child? Oh, um, Jay. He has yeah. a grandson, maybe. He has a grandson. He sit, he watches over the child. Okay. I'll so it makes him happy. Back. It makes him happy. And also, he's showing me a bell. I don't know what this means, but I feel like he rings a bell. Or I don't know. Does somebody hear bells? Do you know? Ask Not that family. I know. Okay. Ask, ask, he rings ask a the bell? Family. Ask the family, or maybe the child rings bells. There's something about... Okay. Ringing bells. I don't know what that means exactly, but it's like it's letting them know that he's there when they hear the bell. Okay. Anything. Thank you so yeah, anything much. Anything from Sandy. <laughs> My sister so Sandra. Anything from her? No. Um, I, I need to move on to the next caller. Scott. But thank you for calling. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Honey. Bye bye. Take good care. Stay safe. All right. I have a. Uh... Uh, 773 area code for you, which is Chicago, Illinois. 773. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you today? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, I, good. I'm seeing somebody, just say yes or no to me. Don't say any names or anything. But is there anybody who's a Tony around you or a, a Tony? You said a or Tony or what? Anthony or Tony? No. Okay. The other thing is, there anyone that's a B or R initial? You said a what? I'm sorry. A B as in boy or R. Um, my my sister and my mom and my nephew are both R. R. Uh, is there one that's spelled R O or R R O? Or yes, R my mom and my nephew. Is it is there, a Ro, is there a Rose or Rosalie or Roberta? No. But it starts R O. Yes. Roma, I don't know the name, but R O is your mom. Uh, Ronicia is my mom, and then my nephew okay. is Royal. Okay, and um, we're. Was there a health issue around your mom? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, I feel like if there was, if there is, that they'll be okay. And and what was there a change around your nephew's home about where your nephew lives or who your nephew lives with? Uh, no, not really. No, not recently. No. Are you close with your nephew? Yes, but I moved away okay so you're the one that moved a mm -hmm. change with a home i was seeing a change with the home so you're the one that moved yes i feel like you need to facetime him i think he misses you okay 
were you were you thinking you weren't thinking of going back though right you're gonna stay where you moved to right i'm sorry you're gonna stay where you moved to right correct uh well i'm trying to move into another home i want to stay in the same city but yeah but i see a change a, like a different home. home yeah i see a change of home around you but i feel like your your nephew misses you and you need to facetime him and connect with him but i see you okay. with a job are you are you working now no have you ever thought of going into law enforcement no okay i'm i'm not or security no okay i'm not sure what i'm seeing exactly but i see an, another job coming around you but i see you in a uniform whatever that job is okay okay and just be patient you know it's it's hard to move into a new place in a new city with the coronavirus and everything so just be patient it'll all come back around for you and i see a girl okay is there, is, is there a girl with you no okay i i'm feeling like there's going to be a girl around you like i don't know a romance or something thank you for calling thank you you're welcome sweetie be patient you know i find okay. everybody that the the main thing about this coronavirus thing is teaching us all patience it's such it's it's um you know, it, it's something that's affecting every single one of us. Um, there's a poem that I want to read to you guys. Uh, Kurt, could you put that up, please? Of course. So, um, so this was written in 1869, and it was reprinted during the 1919 pandemic. And it's like things never change. So the poem goes like this. This is timeless, is what it's called. This is timeless and people stayed at home and read books and listened and they rested and did exercises and made art and played and learned new ways of being and stopped and listened more deeply. Someone meditated Someone prayed, someone met their shadow, and people began to think differently, and people healed. And in the absence of people who lived in ignorant ways, dangerous, meaningless, and heartless, the earth also began to heal. And when the danger ended and people found themselves, they grieved for the dead and made new choices and dreamed of new visions and created new ways of living and completely healed the earth just as they were healed. You guys, that was many, many years ago. And I guess when there's a pandemic, things never change. My prayers and good wishes are going out to all of you. Thank you so much for watching Shar Vision. It means the world to me. I want to thank um, Romy for being here and Richard Ayu, Nikki at home, Nicole Smith, Kurt for running the board and Stuart Krasnow for helping me out. God bless you. Be well. And remember, intuition will take you places logic never could. Love you. Bye bye.